The Shroud of Turin is a burial cloth that shows a man that was scourged, crowned with thorns, crucified, and pierced with a lance. The first reason I believe this is the burial cloth of Jesus are due to the new studies that provide an updated age for the shroud. In 1988, the carbon dating results provided a date in the 1300s. This made many people believe it was a forgery tree for decades. However, in the early 2000s, Ray Rogers was challenged to look into this further. Here's what he said. I had given up on the shroud, and this was about the same time that the lunatic fringe were coming up with an infinite number of ways the date could be wrong. And this was just the last straw. I got a call from Ray. And he goes, this is nonsense. I can prove these people wrong in five minutes. And I said, well, Ray, go for it. So I read their paper, and I thought, I've got the samples that can shoot that full of holes. So I got out the Ross samples, and I got out the, uh, the shroud samples, and I went to work again. He discovered that the wrong samples were selected for the dating. He concluded, the radiocarbon sample was thus not part of the original cloth and was invalid for determining the age of the shroud. He also calculated a new date between 1300 and 3000 years old. Again, this is from a well-rated published peer-reviewed journal. What he believes happened is this. If you happen to hit a place where a yarn segment from the original shroud was spliced into the new uh, reweave part, the splice very definitely shows the new yarn that was being put in and dyed to match. The only thing in the shroud that was dyed or stained was this uh, radiocarbon area. His findings were confirmed by John Brown from Georgia Tech and Bob Villarreal from Los Alamos National Laboratory. I've received many comments that say that Wikipedia disagrees with the findings of Ray Rogers, so we should ignore it. However, I would recommend looking into the sources as they even mention that the date may be incorrect. The carbon-14 date has led many people to believe that this is not the burial cloth of Jesus, although it's amazing that someone from the actual Shroud Turin Research Project wrote a paper refuting that. In October 2019, an analysis of the raw data showed inconsistencies and requested a new carbon-14 date. While these are promising results, a new sample and carbon dating will be needed. The second reason is related to a March 2019 study where a replica of the Shroud of Turin was attempted. The results stated that the perfect reproduction of the Turin Shroud remains a challenge since many other characteristics of the original image have not yet been obtained with any of the processes used for reproduction to date. That basically means that even with the most sophisticated technology available today, we cannot replicate the Shroud of Turin. It's hard for me to believe that we cannot replicate a centuries-old cloth. A similar experiment was conducted in 2012, and from that experiment, we saw the amount of watts necessary to create an image with just some of the properties. It would look something like this. That was the Dallas Cowboy Stadium. With every light on, 750 megawatts are used. Dr. Paolo Di Lazzaro, who led the 2012 study, told National Geographic that it would take several billion watts to create the image. Another thing to factor in is that 750 megawatts are being used throughout the stadium. What science is telling us is that a dead body would have to exude billions of watts to create the image on the shroud. No mere human could do that, but Jesus, the God-man, could. As he illuminated during the transfiguration, he surely illuminated in an even greater way during his resurrection, which is recorded on the Shroud of Turin for us. Also, it would take 10,000 of these lasers to create the image on the shroud, which exceeds the maximum power released by all ultraviolet light sources available today. That statement says it all. We don't have the capability to replicate the shroud. So every Easter, when we remember the resurrection, think about the power of Jesus. Think about that literally explosive power as he rose from the dead to create this image. It's amazing. Now you might be wondering, why can't we replicate all the characteristics of the shroud? This is due to the cloth containing a three-dimensional image. Fabrics are not supposed to contain precise 3D images. As you can see here, a three-dimensional image can be taken from this two-dimensional cloth. This three-dimensional nature inspired the Shroud of Turin Research Project, also known as STIRP, which was the most thorough analysis of the shroud to date. 
The 33-person team was comprised of experts in various fields who spent 17 months preparing for the analysis. They did incredible work, and here they tested several types of images and were not able to obtain the three-dimensional style that the shroud had. To date, this three-dimensional nature could not be matched. The data from the study actually allowed the face of Christ to be modeled by the History Channel, which you'll see here. The fourth reason I believe is that the Shroud of Turin matches blood stains on the Sudarium of Oviedo. The Sudarium is the cloth that had been on Jesus's head, as mentioned in John 27. There was a study that compared blood stains as well as calcium and strontium deposits between the Shroud and the Sudarium. The results suggest that both cloths were used by the same person. The fifth reason, I believe, is due to the medical accuracy of the shroud. The examiner from the research team wrote, the largest blood stain on the burial cloth is on the right side of the chest. It covers the area of the fifth and sixth ribs. This stain very clearly shows separation of blood from a clear watery material. What did John's gospel say? That after Jesus was pierced, blood and water came out. This is medically confirmed here. The examiner even states, the author cannot help but comment that a remarkable consistency exists between the gospel accounts and the forensic pathological findings depicted on the Shroud of Turin. Again, another reason I believe. And I think it's interesting too that the examiner states that there's a remarkable consistency between the Shroud and the gospels. The sixth reason I believe is due to the pollen studies. Max Fry used adhesive tapes to collect dust samples from the Shroud of Turin during the 1978 STIRP investigation. He later classified 58 pollen grains by comparing them to pollen grains in the largest botanical museums around the world. He concluded that a majority of the pollen grains were from Jerusalem. The seventh reason I believe is due to the coins placed over the man's eyes. It was a custom to put coins over the eyes of a dead person so their eyes would stay shut while you're carrying them to their tomb. This was indicated initially by the STIRP team and published in the Numismatist. This was confirmed by imaging analyst expert Robert Haralik, who said the shroud did indeed contain a faint image of the pilot coin. So we have a man that was tortured the way Jesus was, had his side pierced, had blood stains that match the head cloth attributed to Jesus, had coins on his eyes that were minted by Pontius Pilate, was in Jerusalem according to pollen samples, and had an explosion of ultraviolet light to create a 3D profile of his crucified body. This has got to be Jesus. There is no natural explanation for this. The eighth reason I believe is that there is AB blood on the shroud. The blood that is on the Sudarium is also AB blood, and so is the blood from every other Eucharistic miracle. When I read that the blood on the Shroud of Turin was the same as all the Eucharistic miracles, I thought, wow, God, you are brilliant. <laughs> so in conclusion, all these reasons point to the fact that faith and science do not contradict. We wouldn't have this phenomenal data without science. This is an example of God illustrating his incredible power through scientific discoveries. Again, please like this video, share it with others, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. God love you.